What's going on growers? It's James Rigioni coming to you live from Jersey. You might be killing your tomato plants. Today, me and Tucker are going to share with you five mistakes you can afford to make when growing tomatoes. Let's go! The first mistake is not pruning your tomato plants. Look at this plant right here. Look how the lower leaves are in contact with the soil. That is not what we want. When that happens, soil-borne organisms can get into these leaves, cause diseases, and that disease can then spread up the plant. Tuck, what are you doing, buddy? We got no snacks for you here. This guy loves beating the videos. We'll get to him in a minute. But when you have leaves that are touching the soil like that, that is a really bad thing and that could easily spread disease up the plant. So what we wanna do is remove those lower leaves. Check out how bushy this plant is too. Look at all the tops and everything growing. We don't want that either because when a plant is bushy like this, it lacks airflow. And we know that air, airflow and light are the enemies of disease. So let me bring you over to two tomatoes that I've staked up and show you what I mean. Let's take a look at these two tomato plants. Here is one that I've pruned already. Look how there's no leaves at the bottom here, nothing in contact with the soil. A lot of air can move through here, so it's less likely to get any kinds of diseases. Now, let's move over to one that I haven't pruned yet. Look at the difference. Look how bushy it is. Look how some of these leaves are in contact with, I mean, it's mulch, but it's basically still the soil. And look how the leaves already have a little bit of issues. If I leave those leaves, that issue could spread up the plant. So we don't want that to happen. What we're going to do is prune this plant because ideally we want this plant to grow up one single stem. Right here, you'll notice between the sun leaf and the stem, that right there is a sucker. If we allow that sucker to grow, then that sucker will essentially turn into a whole another tomato plant. It's almost like a tomato plant growing out of another tomato plant. That will cause the plant to get really bushy and we don't want that. We wanna grow up a single stem. When you grow plants up a single stem, then what's gonna happen is they're gonna get a lot of light and a lot of airflow. This is for indeterminate tomatoes because your indeterminate tomatoes will produce up until the frost. So this thing's gonna get really tall and that's kind of what we want because then there's gonna be a lot of air and light that's going to be able to access the plant. So let me show you what I do. First thing I'll do here, I use these little fiskers. They work really nice. I'll put a link in the description if you wanna grab some. So first thing I'll do is I'll pop off these suckers. So the suckers, you ideally want to get rid of them. When they're small, you can just remove them with your finger, just like that. Another one down here, I'll just pop it off just like that. Some of these bigger sun leaves, I'll just cut off with a scissor, with the scissors just like this, and then remove these lower ones. I'll also remove this leaf right here. And then this one on the back here, because it's moving down and touching the ground. So we'll take that off. Then I'll come in the inside, remove these suckers too. And this one here, and then this one. So when we're doing this, another bonus to uh, pruning your tomato in this style is when you prune tomatoes and grow them up a single stem like this, your tomatoes will actually start producing up to two weeks earlier than if you don't prune your tomatoes. Let's go back over to the trellis and check out the tomatoes that I showed you earlier. Again, look how bushy these are. So these three tomatoes, I didn't prune. Uh, there's just too many leaves and too many suckers and stuff growing. Let's remove them real quick. I wanna show you how quick and easy it is to do. So first I'm gonna pop off all these suckers here. A lot of it you can just do with your hands. Cut off these fan leaves, also known as sun leaves. Move over to this one. Tucks in here having fun. If you love seeing the little boss in the videos, make sure you spam some hearts down love for the little guy. He's always out here working hard. So move these sun leaves. So these sun leaves, you need, do need some of them because they are going to suck up some, you know, suck up the sun and help the plant grow, but you don't need all of them, especially on the lower half. So we're gonna remove all these suckers here, growing in the crotches. These leaves here. And then now look at those three plants. I can even take, I can even take this one off. Look how much more space is under here, how much more air can get under here. That's really what we want. As the plants continue to grow up a single stem, up this string right here, what we'll do is we'll continue to attach the plants with these plastic clips. This makes it so easy and so quick to actually get it done. I love these clips, they work really well. Another thing we want to think about is when the plants start to get tall, say up here or so, 
What we want to do is if you live in an area like the south or an area that gets really hot and has a lot of sun, you may want to leave a few suckers at the middle of the plant. The reason for this is if the sun is just constantly beating down on some of those tomatoes, especially some of your beefsteaks, then they can get sun scald. This is essentially just sunburn for tomatoes. So to prevent that, if you leave a sucker or two in the middle of the plant, that will help grow some extra leaves that will kind of shade out some of that fruit so you don't really get the sun scald. When you grow tomatoes in this fashion, when you grow them vertically, you will get earlier harvests, less disease issues, and it will make harvesting actually a lot easier because you'll be able to see all the tomatoes. It'll be more convenient because it's about head height. So there's so many benefits to growing tomatoes vertically, to pruning your tomatoes, and to just uh, do this style because it makes everything much better. Look at Tuck, looking for a snack over here. I think he wants a snack. Come on, boy, let's get the classic one. He loves these things. It's funny because on uh, the seed pack said that this was Mizuna, but it doesn't look anything like Mizuna. So I'm not sure if it actually is. It might have been an error, but it says it's Mizuna. This guy absolutely loves the flavor of them. Let me, let me give him a piece. <laughs> uh, he, he tells me when he wants to be in the videos, when he wants to show up and get some stuff done. He's out here working. He had a little drink of water, but he wants some living water right from the stems of the plants like this. We'll let him snack on that. If you love seeing Tuck in the videos, hit the subscribe button. And if you're getting some value out of this video, share it with your friends. Also, check out the merch down at jamesprigioni.com. It's a limited time thing. We've got the Gardening is Life shirt, got the Flower of Life on it. We're real proud of it. But we've got a lot more stuff to get into, so let's head back to the mistakes that you can't be making or you could possibly be killing your tomato plants. For your determinate varieties of tomato, like the Jolene right here, you can stake them and prune off the lower leaves. This way they get some more air and you avoid some disease issues, but you don't want to remove all the suckers because your determinate tomatoes, they're only going to produce one round of tomatoes, then they're gonna quit producing, as opposed to your indeterminates, which will continue to produce all season up until the frost. So when it comes to your determinates, you're gonna prune those uh, a little different. You're not gonna to wanna to do much pruning as opposed to the indeterminates, which I just showed you. The second mistake you can't afford to make when growing tomatoes is improper watering. So when it comes to growing your tomatoes, a lot of the issues will stem from bad watering practices. When watering your tomatoes, you never want to get the leaves wet because wet leaves are more subject and prone to getting disease issues and fungal infections can just breed like mad when you have wet leaves. Instead, what you wanna do is to take your hose with a light stream and water the plants right at the base, just like this. You want the plants to get a nice soaking. So when it comes to actually watering the tomatoes, they don't like to ha constantly be watered with like a light surface watering. Instead, they like a nice deep soaking. You do not want the soil to constantly remain wet. If the soil is constantly wet, then that's gonna make your plants more prone to getting root rot, which isn't what we want. On the other hand, if you let the soil get too dry, then that's going to make and grow weak plants that are susceptible to all different kinds of disease issues because they just get so dried out, it, they let the disease in easier. We need healthy plants. So what you wanna do is when the heat comes, you wanna make sure you have a nice mulch down because the mulch will help retain the moisture and you also want a soil that drains well. So the combination of having a mulch down and soil that drains well will help prevent a lot of the issues. This will also prevent uh, blossom end rot. You can see how the soil is draining nicely. Because blossom end rot, even though it's a calcium deficiency, it's often brought on by uneven watering. So when you could have a mulch down that will help regulate the moisture of the soil, and you have soil that drains relatively well, that will really help with your blossom end rot issues. And you could even sprinkle in some uh, eggshells when you first transplant out your tomatoes, that will help add some calcium to the soil as well. A question I often get is, how often should I water my tomato plants? And my response would be, that really depends on a number of factors. It depends on how quickly your soil drains, about whether or not you have a mulch down. It also depends on what time of year it is, the size of the plant. So for instance, at this time of year, with a relatively young plant, I'm only gonna water them every couple of days. I'm not gonna be out here every single day watering them because my soil is sandy. It drains relatively well, but it still does hold moisture. Another thing is, as the plant continues to grow, it's obviously going to need more water. And as it gets hotter, it's going to need more water because when this tomato plant gets really big and it's really hot out, then it needs to cool itself off. To cool itself off, the tomatoes basically sweat. They transpire, so they release that uh, they like 
cool themselves off by releasing the water through their leaves. So they're going to need more water to replace that water that they're kind of sweating out. Also, when the plants have a lot of fruit on them, they're going to need a lot of water to put into that fruit. So a good thing to do, a good practice is to go out to your plants and just check the top few inches of soil. If the soil is really dry, then you'll probably need to water your plants. This again is where a mulch comes in handy. The third mistake you can't afford to make when growing tomatoes is not managing pests and disease. The infamous tomato hornworm is one of the most common pests when it comes to tomatoes. They're big, they're nasty, and they can do a lot of damage in a short amount of time. So what you wanna do is come out and regularly inspect your plants. Growing them vertically will make it much easier to see the whole plant and to see if the tomato hornworms are causing issues because the earlier you find them, the better. But there's also another trick. So this right here is dill. This is a great thing to have planted right next to your tomato plants because the tomato hornworm will also go after the dill plants. And the hornworms are much easier to see on a plant like this because they just tend to blend in so well with the tomatoes. So they're real easy to see on the dill. This way, if you see tomato hornworms on the dill, then you have a good idea that they're probably on your tomatoes too. If you do find them, what you should do is go out and just remove all the ones you can find, but there's probably ones you've missed as well. What I suggest doing is hitting your plants with BT. This stuff works fantastic for the hornworms. It's natural, it's just made from soil bacteria, and it works really well. This is the same thing I use on my brassicas too, for the cabbage worms. I love this stuff and I'll put a link down in the description if you wanna get some. Another issue that you'll get when it comes to pests on the tomato plants is aphids and spider mites. So even though they're not going to kill your plants, what they will do, these small insects, is they will spread disease between the plants, which is something we're really trying to avoid. So when I see any issues, like some holes in the bottom of some of my leaves, or some, uh, some yellow blotches on the leaves, which is often caused by spider mites, I'll hit the plants with neem oil. This stuff is fantastic. It's natural as well, and it does more than just kill off insects. You wanna make sure you get the one with the azadiracta in it. And this also helps with fungal issues too. So it's a great overall spray for your plants. The thing is, it is an oil. So you want to make sure that you're only spraying it either in the early morning or at the evening because uh, you don't want the leaves to actually burn and you want the oil to have time to soak into the leaves. So what I do is I mix this with just some common dish soap and spray it on my plants. I usually use, it's suggested you can use one and a half teaspoons per gallon. I usually only use about one teaspoon per gallon, but when spraying plants, you always want to make sure that you first spray one plant and then see how the spray does and then give it 24 hours. If the plant looks okay, then you can spray the whole garden. You don't wanna just spray the whole garden with your first mixture because it might not be the right mixture and you don't wanna damage a lot of your plants. When it comes to disease, be on the lookout for infected leaves and you want to remove those infected leaves once you see them and take them off the whole entire property because we do not want this issue to spread. So a lot of time infections will stem from wet leaves, not enough airflow, and not enough light. So if you, you, if you avoid the first couple mistakes that I share with you, then that will really help you avoid some of the diseases in the first place. But if some of your diseases are from soil-borne organisms that you can't avoid and the soil itself is infected, like fusarium wilt or verticillium, then that's kind of hard to manage. If it's taken hold of the plant, there's not much you can do besides kind of just removing the plant and this way it won't spread to your other plants. What you should do is put in your notes that you had that issue, and then the next year, you should try to plant varieties that are resistant to that issue. For instance, you can try the Super Sweet 100. This is one of my favorites. It's resistant to Fusarium and Verticillium. So instead of trying to manage the disease, you could just avoid it and not have to deal with it. The fourth mistake you can't afford to make when growing tomatoes is not supplying them with adequate nutrition. Healthy plants will be less susceptible to disease, so we need to make sure we're providing them the nutrition to be able to thrive. Also, we want to have a soil that has good structure. In order to have that, we must add a good amount of organic matter to our soil. This way it drains well and it can also hold moisture relatively well. Another thing is you want to add either compost or an all-purpose fertilizer. So what I like to do when transplanting out my tomatoes is I'll add an all-purpose fertilizer at the bottom, mix that in a little bit. I'll also add some bone meal and even some eggshells if I think they need some extra calcium. Then I'll plant my tomato and on the top few inches, I'll mix in a little bit more fertilizer. This way, as I water the plant, the fertilizer goes down into the roots. That's how I like to do it. 
Then, when the tomatoes start to get taller, much larger, and they start to flower and fruit, I'll go back around and I'll add some more all-purpose fertilizer. I'll, I'll either just take some of the fertilizer, sprinkle it around the plants, and mix it into the top few inches of the soil, or I'll take some of the fertilizer, mix it into some soil that I have, and put that around the base of the plants. This way, every time we water, we're also feeding the plants. What you don't want to do is you don't want to be adding a fertilizer that is high in nitrogen when the plants are flowering or fruiting because that will kind of make the plants focus more on the production of leaves. Once they get to the state of production, what we want to do is have them focus on the fruit and on maintaining overall health. The fifth mistake you can't afford to make when growing tomatoes is exercising bad transplanting practices. If you want healthy plants that produce large yields, you need to give them a good start. One of the most common mistakes when transplanting out tomatoes is not hardening off your plants. You can't just take your plants from in a greenhouse or inside and then bring them out and directly plant them in the ground, or they can go into extreme transplant shock and possibly even die. The conditions are just way way too different from being inside to outside. The humidity is higher, um, the temperature is perfect, there's not as much wind, then you bring them out, it's just such a big shock and such a big change. So you need to slowly acclimate your plants to being outside. What I suggest you do is bring your plants outside in a shaded location for a short period of time and then bring them back in. As the days progress, continue to bring them outside for longer periods of time and bring them out into the sun. After your plants can be outside for at least 24 hours, they'll be acclimated, they'll be hardened off, and you could actually transplant those into the ground. Tomatoes are heat-loving plants and they love the sun, so you don't want to transplant them out too early. I say that it's always safer to transplant them out a week or two late rather than too early. Because if you transplant them out too early and a frost comes, that could really kill back all the work and all the time that you've, that you've spent growing that tomato up. So if you do transplant out early, make sure that you have a safeguard. What I mean by that is you can use something as simple as just a gallon jug and put that over your young tomato plants. If a frost is coming, that will really help protect them and prevent the frost from dropping down on those leaves. Also, it's a good idea to always put in your journal exactly when you transplant out your tomatoes. This way in the future you can reference when you transplanted them out and in time be able to put them into the ground at the perfect time, which is the most ideal for them to grow. I have never found that transplanting out earlier has led to earlier harvests because the tomatoes kind of just sit and wait until the weather gets nice. You can't force the tomato to grow and you can't force the nice weather to come. So I have found even plants I uh, put in the ground earlier, the ones I put in later end up just catching up and grow healthier because they don't have the stress of trying to deal with cool temperatures. Overall, I'm just growing so many tomatoes. Look at all of them here. This is going to be a section where it's just going to basically be a wall of tomatoes. Then there's more tomatoes in the back there. Almost that whole bed is dedicated to tomatoes. Come check it out real quick. So, so many tomatoes here. They're going to be growing up the strings. Then in between that, I have a lot of companions for my tomatoes. I've got carrots because we know that carrots love tomatoes just like the book. The book Carrots Love Tomatoes. We've got some borage here, a great companion for tomatoes. We've also got some marigolds here and some garlic. So this whole bed is designed for tomatoes. I need to string up this side as well. Uh, the pallet raised bed has been a fantastic spot for me to grow tomatoes in the uh, past. So there's gonna be more tomatoes videos coming out because they're one of my favorite crops to grow. I love doing it so much. That's today's video growers. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got something out of it. Mine and Tuck's goal for this video was to make it so that you not only never lose your tomato plants and they don't die on you, but that you also get healthy, thriving tomato plants that will produce for you up to the last frost. Right here is our tomato trellis. I showed you in a previous video how when these get super, super tall, we're gonna lower and lean them. So if you wanna learn a little more about that, check out the video uh, about trellising tomatoes that we just posted. I think there's a lot of value in it. Before I let you go, I wanted to mention to check out the merch down at jamesprigioni.com. Grab a Gardening is Life shirt with the flower of life right on it. Tuck's over there having fun, snacking on some stuff. We also wanted to mention a thank you to one of our new channel members, Pamela Callahan. Thanks for being a part of Team Grow. Thanks for having your hand in everything we're doing out here. And if you want to join the team, hit the join now button right at the bottom. I got to give this guy a snack. He's just going nuts. He loves to snack on these things so much. Me and Tuck hope you got a lot of value out of the video, and we hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, share this with your friends, hit the subscribe button, 
And Tuck and Jay's will be back at you again real soon. We out.